All right, so you want to know how to package cookies and pastries. Well, Bennett Maxwell, he's the founder of Dirty Dough Cookies. These guys are being sued for their cookie boxes. Some of the things we're going to talk about are going to be how they pack up their cookies, how their box design actually reduces cookie damage in transit. So when they show up at home, they don't show up all broken and damaged. We're also going to talk about how there's innovations in packaging that have allowed them to change their business model, which have allowed them to reduce their cost. has decreased Uber Eats delivery time, which is awesome because it makes the drivers actually make more money. And then they've eliminated a ton of excess packaging. You're also going to get why they're getting sued by a big cookie company and how they've actually turned this lawsuit, which is a serious lawsuit, into some of the greatest marketing campaigns you've probably ever seen in your life. I know these are the most amazing campaigns at the moment. Each one of them is better than any Super Bowl ad you've, you've seen to date. All right, so let's jump into the show with Bennett Maxwell. And we're going to talk about cookie packaging. <laughs> podcast is called uh, Packaging Unboxed, uh, focus on packaging. And man, I saw I saw your stuff come online. Um, I think I was introduced to you guys by your commercials, right? These okay. killer commercials that you're doing. So before we <laughs> jump in, man, like, can you just give us like a quick one minute rundown of, of who you are and, and what you do? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Bennett Maxwell, my background is sales entrepreneurship. Right now, my current company is Dirty Dough. It's a cookie franchise. So we franchise. 10 months ago, and it's grown pretty quick. We have seven open locations with two more opening actually this week. Um, and 200 of them have been sold. So we got wow. a lot more to, a lot more to open. Like you had like 90, like 90 sold. And then I think once this lawsuit hit, right. All yeah, of a sudden, that's exactly where we're at. We are at 90, um, when the lawsuit was made public. And, and, and then, then it yeah, just blew up. We, 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 we've doubled <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's awesome. it's two and a half months. So talk about good marketing. Uh, Crumble's good at marketing for themselves. And for, uh, <laughs> <laughs> totally I think, all right. So like you're, you've got a personal mission statement that I, I, I caught somewhere. It was like, you know, how do you uh -huh. find joy and fulfillment despite life's dirtiness? Right. And yep. so, so just talking about life's dirtiness. To simplify things a little bit, right? You you franchise, you make cookies, you sell them, you put them in a box, and you're getting sued. So I mean, it doesn't get any dirtier than getting <laughs> sued for making cookies. So why are you here. getting sued? Right? So the, the, there's there's several points to lawsuit, but the main points that they have issues with is uh, the the fact that we rotate our favor flavors weekly, and the fact that we use a rectangular box, which are so <laughs> silly. Uh, we hired some researcher guy, you know, reached out on LinkedIn and said, Hey, I can help you out with this. And with, he went for, you started alphabetically by the time he got to California. So we're at C, he had 75 right. companies that do a planned rotating menu, whether that's weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, whatever. And I'm like, how are, you know, this company has been only been around for five years. So, right. uh, meaning crumble. And then the rectangular boxes, the, the silly part about that is they do have a trade dress on their box and it says it has to be pink, crumble <laughs> logo, crumble cookies um, written out, and then four cookies printed on the bottom of their packaging. Well, we don't have any of those, right? The only right. similarity that we have is the shape of the box. On their trade dress, it says, we do not claim the shape of the trade uh, of the box as part <laughs> of the trade dress. It's like, what? <laughs> what did, why? Why is that in the lawsuit? But man, you could point out to another hundred things that are in the lawsuit that you're like, what? What are you guys? What are you guys thinking here? So yeah, very silly. Your company is Dirty Dough. Your color's blue. Uh -huh. Theirs is pink. They've got like a little chef with a hat. You know, the bite taken out of his hat. You've got a cookie with a bite taken out of it, right? There's like stock images for for years with bites taken out of it. You know, you've taken this like serious lawsuit right i mean you know anytime you get sued it's serious like it's gonna cost you money right um but you've made some of the most hilarious content from this like serious issue um you know you, you've got people on the street asking about like the box shape you've got um this lawyer character you've got this like fat cat business owner chasing people around acting like a maniac you launched a new ad today which was hilarious um you know, like threatening kids, selling cookies. Like this is insane, dude. So like how on earth, like where does this idea even come from to take this ridiculous lawsuit and turn it into this like marketing gold? Um, It kind of just fell on our lap. So it wasn't planned by any means because if it was planned, we would have started this in May, <laughs> right? When we actually started getting sued where we didn't, 
nobody knew that we were getting sued until like mid July because that's when a news article picked up. So I'm I'm here boarding a plane to go to Mexico for a month. Like it wasn't just like a little trip. I'm yeah. going for a month, and I and I see KSL a local news channel pick up the article, and I'm like, ah oh, crap. You know now I have to get on top of it. So that that's what it was is like me responding, and the, and the lawsuit shows cookies. Our cookie with sprinkles next to their cookie with sprinkles. And I'm just like, come on, you know? So like I, I was making fun of it. I was like, this is a joke. Like grandma, hide your sprinkles or, <laughs> or crumbles going to come after you. And, you know, and there's hundreds of thousands of people that saw it. And then news channels are picking up that post. And then in May, we started uh, some billboards, just dirty dough coming soon in Utah mm-hmm. County, right? Because uh, this is where we're based out. Well, this is also Columbus <laughs> headquarters. They've never done a billboard right. ever in four and a half years, that, at least that I've seen. They see a few of our coming soon video uh, billboards. They must have put twenty <laughs> billboards on there, you know. And then so it's like, okay, well, we did billboards. Now they're doing right. billboards. How about we do billboards with the loss, you know? Because we were doing like the digital rotating ones, so you can like change the designs. So and then we threw out some billboards, and, and it was just like you know the marketing company came out with maybe twenty options of, of of different things, and I chose the top five that I liked, and then we threw them out on billboards, and it was like our cookies. So our cookies are so good, we're being sued. And it shows like a big cookie yeah. with a censored mark, <laughs> like as if you're looking at looking like X-rated right. <laughs> videos, you know? Um, and just things like our cookies don't crumble under comp- competition. You can't hurt our feelings or whatever. So like, yeah, we actually put the billboards, but because I posted it and I tagged Crumble and I was like, hey, Crumble, I like <laughs> your billboards. How do you like ours? You know, that one, that one got like half a million views and then I don't know, news channels in like eight different states picked it up and took screenshots, you know, and posted that. So it kind of just, you know, little by little, and they're like, okay, people are loving this because they agree with how silly this lawsuit is. So how about we make a stupid video? And we made one and everybody loved it. We're like, all right, you guys can make another one. And it was uh, just a company that reached out, James Dayton from Buckwild Media. He's like, hey, I want to do a video for you guys. And I was like, no, let's not do it. And we initially turned it down. And then I'm like, what the heck? Let's try it. Let's, yeah. you know, it's, it's stupid. And they make those kind of satire videos. I'm like, let's, let's, let's give it a go. And then it came out and I'm like, you guys are <laughs> hilarious. Keep, keep going. Keep going. Oh, it's awesome. I mean, yeah, it's, it's hilarious. And I think at the end of the last, the end of the last video, it says, you know, dirty dough sucks, which I, I loved, yeah. uh, <laughs> just, you know, growing up in the nineties, there's like, you know, there's a band called Primus and, um, you know, Primus uh-huh. had these t-shirts that said Primus sucks. And you'd go to the, you know, you'd go to a Primus show and people would be walking around with Primus suck shirts. And then you'd get like the new, new to the band fan. And they'd be like, why are you wearing that shirt? Get out of here. Like they didn't get it. So I love like yeah. this dirty dough sucks. It's almost like you're either in the club or you're not, or either get the brand or you don't. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just making light of a stupid situation and kind of goes like, that's my belief at, um, it's really, you know, it, are are there failures, are there mistakes, or are there opportunities to learn from? It? And if you're looking at like how how can I take this experience, the situation that happened, what can I do with it? You know, can I can I can I bring it into a positive life? Can I be optimistic about it? You know, going back to the mission statement, underneath our mission statement, our core values, and one of those is optimism, right? Like we accept problems and we're glad to be able to to face them, right? Because we're going to learn from them. Whether or not, you know, we lose money, we lose time, we, whatever, as long as you're learning from these experiences, then I think that's the way to live life. Just like, you know, not business specifically, but just life in general. Yeah, no, that's a great, I mean, it's a great outlook. And I mean, it, it just shows what you guys are doing. Um, you've said a bunch, you know, you're an entrepreneur. You don't, you don't necessarily sell cookies. You sell franchises, right? Which I think is a different approach to most entrepreneurs where they're like in love with their product. Not that you're not, but you know, a lot of times they're like, you could say that (laughs) I've never made, I've never made a batch of cookies, never made dirty dough cookies. Um, I'm very convinced that it's not about the product. You have to have a good product. Don't get me wrong, but just tell me one food franchise brand that has the best product in there, whether it's pizza, whether it's hamburgers, whether it's Mexican, Chinese, who's got the best product. None of the top companies have, but they have the consistency yeah. and they have the model 
and the process. And that's where I think this whole thing about like crumbles, are, oh, you're still in our recipes. I was like, come on, go taste a cookie. We couldn't find two different cookies. But even if we did, like, I want to say, like, I'll send you my recipes. Like, who, rest, the recipes don't yeah. make the business. It's everything else. The recipes are the easy part. You can go find copycat recipes online for any company out there. So, no, d definitely not super passionate about the cookies or anything like that or the product itself. It's, I need a good product because my customer is my franchisee and they need a good product, right? But that's why we're improving the product, not because I love cookies. <laughs> I, mean, I do love cookies, but. <laughs> Hey, I want to introduce you to idpdirect.com. We recently won a Silver Pen Awards for collaborating on the future of sustainable packaging. If you want to work directly with the packaging manufacturer and you're tired of distributors and middlemen, check them out. Visit idpdirect.com to learn more. All right, back to the commercials. You have these crazy commercials. They talk about your packaging. They talk about your, your product. So did you have to run like the videos that that team put together for you? Did you have to run that by your lawyers before you put it out? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and what yeah. was like, what was their response? Uh, a few videos that like, it makes me nervous. And I'm like, but, but why? And I'm like yeah. questioning them, like, but why? You know, well, I don't know. <laughs> you know, and it's like, well, are we saying anything that's not factually true? Well, no. Okay. So legally, is there any issues here? No. Okay, cool. We're throwing them that nice. way. Nice. <laughs> you know, but they've been really good to good mm -hmm. to work with. And they, both of the attorneys that we're working with, um, they said they've never allowed their clients to do this before. Uh, like, you know, <laughs> go to social media with it. And when asked, when I was asked, you know, why, what's going through their minds? Why are they letting us do that? I was on the phone with them when I was like reading this email. I was like, Hey, how would I, how would I respond? And they go, um, we'll tell them that we've never allowed this and we don't plan on allowing this in the future, but this lawsuit and the word he used mm -hmm. was laughable. So laughable that we felt like you couldn't screw it up. <laughs> so, all right, I'll go with that. That's awesome. So have you guys received like a, a C and D on these, like a cease and desist on these ads? No. No, I mean, they don't, Crumble doesn't do cease and desist. They didn't even send a cease and desist before they filed a federal lawsuit. They just go straight to the federal lawsuit. Boom. There's a, there's a company with one store. I'm going to do a federal lawsuit. I'm not going to send them a letter. I'm not going to ask them to change. Who's got time for that, right? Let's just have a, a battle and who's got deeper pockets. Um, no, completely disingenuous that they didn't. I mean, I know the owners have met them face to face. They have my cell phone number and they don't send a cease and desist. Like, really? Are you after a resolution? Or are you just trying to stifle competition? Because if you're after a resolution, hands down, there's no reason why you shouldn't have, send, shouldn't have sent a cease and desist of, hey, possible brand confusion. Can you guys make these changes? And we start talking. No, they didn't want that. That's, that's nuts, man. So in terms of the packaging, uh, you mentioned the, the, the lawsuit claims, um, the rectangular box. Is there any possible confusion there at all? Like what? We sell cookies in a box. Yeah. So here's the, here's the caveat there. We started with a rectangular box and Crumble started with a rectangular box. Well, 25% of our business is Uber Eats drivers, meaning it's delivery. How, and if you have big cookies, giant, they have toppings, mm -hmm. drizzles, whatever, and they're warm, you don't want them to smash into each other, right? So if you have a square box, you, the opportunity for all four cookies to smash into each other is very high. Well, if you have a rectangular box, you're separating those. So it's a it's a matter of functionality. It just delivers better. Now, can we go to the rectangular box and not, you know, suffer anything with the business? Sure, we can. Um, but and then there's another cookie company called Chip. Hmm. Now, at least they don't file lawsuits, but they are sending people cease and desist letters for <laughs> using a, a square box. So whether you want to use a square or a rectangle, these two companies are arrogant enough to think that they own the shape of a box. And I'm just like, God, get out of here, guys. No, that's, that's silly. I'm not, I'm, yeah. you know, I'm not going to entertain that at all. You basically freeze these cookies, right? Like you, um, send out hockey pucks. Yeah. We do a centralized production. Model. Yeah. Yep. And then they just pop them in the oven. So we're operating at, I mean, it's just, again, go find two companies as far as back end processes go that are more different than a dirty donut crumble. You can't find it. We do a centralized production model with the frozen cookie pucks and they make it on site with teenagers, right? 65 cookies at a time. We do 1500 cookies per batch. They weigh it by hand. We machine portion. It. That's why we do fillings, stuffed cookies, two layer cookies, three layer cookies. Crumble doesn't do any of that because you can't do it by hand. You have to have these specialized machines. That's cool. And then with your franchises, do they, will they have to order their own packaging from an approved vendor or does, is it centralized? We do that. 
yeah, we centralize that as well. So like packaging is a huge expense. Like right now, paper is yeah. just through the roof. And because we can order 100,000 or 300,000 quantities, we get it cheaper um, than, the, than the competition. And then we deliver it as we're delivering the dough. But we just ordered packaging and we just tested it this last week. It's 40% of what we're paying now. So 60% off and it, and it ships from China. It's a thicker card uh, yeah. board and it has that anti-grease coating. Um, so we're really excited about that. We just tested that and uh, yeah, it works a lot better than our packaging and it's legitimately 40% of the cost. So we were already cheaper than the competition um, and we just cut that down a lot because we use the centralized production model. And because this is a packaging yeah. podcast, let me jump into it a little bit more of the packaging itself. So our issue right now, I mean, I already said 25% of our orders aren't cut. I mean, 25% of the people that come through the door aren't our customers, right? They're DoorDash mm -hmm. and Uber Eats deliver, uh, driver. So if you are the driver, you get paid per order, not per hour. So you want to make it as quick as possible. Well, an order comes in for cookies, whether it's crumble or dirty dough or whatever, we instruct our employees to say, tell them it's ready. Even though we don't have it in no. the packaging yet, because if I put it in the packaging right now, it's going to take you 10, 20, 30 minutes to get there. And then boom, they get, you know, it's going to yeah. be all greasy and ugly. So we say, tell them it's ready. When they get there, we're going to, so you show up, you're going to have to wait in line. If there's a line, tell me your name. I'm going to go in the back. Yeah. The cookies are already baked, but I still have to get them. I still have to put them in the packaging. Um, and then I have to decorate them. You know, it takes five minutes. Well, that's five minutes that you don't get paid for five minutes that the customer has to wait. And frankly, it would have been better for me to prep the cookies before you got there. Right. Cause I can choose when I want to do that. I don't have to wait till other customers. Um, so we've been wanting to do these warming lockers kind of like little Caesars. Have you, have you ever been in the little Caesars and seen the pizza portals that they, Not they do? It's like sixth grade. You know? <laughs> okay. So you, you, you walk in as an Uber Eats driver, you get a, a three digit code. Um, on your phone, you walk in and there's this warming locker there. You go, you see your, your name, you type in one, six, four, and then it says, you know, Bennett is in uh, locker number two. And then the door opens, boom, I grab my cookies or my pizza and I'm gone. So we're, we're doing that now in our stores because we just got the packaging to allow us to do that. Because now we can, as soon as that order comes in, I can place my cookies into the packaging in my downtime, I got 30 minutes, 20, 30 minutes before, until right. you arrive. I'm going to have some downtime. Now I can prep the cookies. Now, when you walk in, you go out straight to the locker. You don't need to talk to anybody because you don't want to, right? You're not yeah. a customer. You don't need that human interaction. You just want to get paid. You go straight to the locker, type in 164. That locker pops open. You grab the cookies, get back in your car, go deliver it. So it speeds up the process a lot um, while decreasing our labor costs and you know a lot of that interaction. And it came down to finding the right package. That's awesome. And what, what's different about this particular packaging that allows you to do that system? It, it, ha it has some coating, coating on it. I don't, I don't know yeah. what it is. Um, it's some grease coating. So what we use right now, um, I guess it doesn't have the coating. We also put like a little wax liner yeah. in there. And even then it bleeds through this. We don't even have to put the liner. So it actually decreases costs even further. Not that those liners cost that much, but they're a pen up in here too, right? It adds up. Um, so yeah, we don't need to use liners anymore and be, whatever this coating is, it really works. What are you guys using your, your packaging for beyond just carrying your cookies? So what, what we're doing on our, uh, we just ordered a ton of uh, new boxes. So now they're getting shipped out to the stores, but like some of the messaging, cause we have a big mental health push with dirty dough and a nonprofit we do each of the four packages. So single four, six and dozen, they have a different message. One is perfectly imperfect. One is proudly unique inside and out. One is life's messy and that's okay. Um, things like that. So we do use our packaging to spread that message. We also have uh, on this new order that we just did, we have QR codes printed on all the packaging. And it looks like a sticker. It's kind of offset a little bit. And it's like, scan me for, I mean, I don't know what it says, but you scan it. You don't need to download an app. You scan it and uh, it just pops up in a web browser. You, you say, allow camera, allow blah, blah, blah. And then you point your camera at the box of cookies and you tap the screen and then cookies pop out and it comes to life. It's an augmented reality experience. So we've done that on top of our packaging. And then you can send happy birthday messages that fireworks are popping up, right? Or 4th of July or happy anniversary or Valentine's or just, you know, 
whatever you want, but we're doing this custom um, augmented reality experience and we use our packaging to do that. We use our packaging to spread the message, jumped into, you know, we use a rectangular packaging for our four box to prevent, you know, the, the cookies from shuffling around cross contamination. Um, if you were the guy selling those cookie boxes, like how would you sell these cookie boxes to yourself? I, I don't know much about <laughs> acting, but this is, this is how I treat anything with sales. Yeah. I think it's a little opposite. I think typically we make a product and then we go try to sell right. a product. Well, I'm, I'm going to go to the market and see what, what you need. And then I'm going to sell you what you need, you know? So I, it, it's more of a, like, what is the most, I'm going to re reference what I'm doing franchises, right? I don't know how to sell a franchise. What do you want a franchise? Well, I start talking to people. It's labor. People want low labor. Okay. Well, what else do you want? Well, I want, I, I want it to be lower risk. Well, how do you reduce the risk? Well, let's do smaller square footage, right? Cause that's your biggest, mm -hmm. I mean, you're signing a 10 year lease. So do you want to pay $1,800 a month or, or six grand right. a month to sign on that? Okay. Well, how do we then solve those issues? Well, it, I can reduce your labor if I can make the cookies in bulk before I ship them to you. I can reduce your labor if you don't have to weigh anything by hand anymore, and that's all pre-portioned with machines. I can reduce your square footage by not having you have your own mixers in the store, by not having you store your own raw ingredients. So that's kind of how I went about it is what do you want? What is the, what is the perfect model? Let me go create that because I know if I can create that, you already told me you want to buy it, right? So like we had tons of franchises pre-sold before we even filed our documents because I was already getting their feedback of like, well, this is what we're going to do. And they're like, oh, that's a terrible idea. Well, this is what we're going to do. Oh, I like that. Okay, I'm going to push that one hard. Well, I'm going to do this. Uh, it's a decent idea. Doesn't, you know, wake me up in the morning excited. Okay, maybe I'll put that on the shelf and see if I want to visit it later. But that's why I've sold anything that I've done, whether it's, you know, solar or pest control or Cutco Nice or Vivint Security or cookie franchises. That's how I've always tried, tried to look oh. at it. So then if I was trying to sell you packaging, and I'm a, I'm a packaging designer, so I don't, I'm not, I don't consider myself a, consider myself a salesperson, but I still do sales, right? I'm still selling uh, the creative. I'm still selling you on the idea. So coming yeah. into your team, if I'm a packaging salesperson, it would be seeing that you guys have the, the tissue underneath, you know, that, that wax paper underneath your cookies, seeing that you don't have this locker, yeah. seeing the inefficiencies in, in those little processes that maybe packaging can solve. And I'm not selling you a new box. I'm just selling you this efficient system that can help you sell more cookies, speed up the process, reduce all these, yeah. you know, like really focus on your pain points versus I got a shiny new box, right? Cause anybody can make a box. And then, yeah. And then you're competing on price if that's all you're doing. Right. But it's like, no, no, let me, my packaging is going to have a QR code on mm -hmm. it. Right. Be, and, and I'm going to maybe partner with a company that does this so we can offer that to you in, in a more unique experience. And then you can charge your customers another dollar if they want to send a love you message. And we just put a sticker on top, right. you know, with the different QR codes, things like that. But yeah, just diving in and like, what are the needs? And a lot of times you don't know the needs. They don't know the needs. The customer doesn't. So you kind of have to just analyze it. Well, how much does that little liner cost? How can I get rid of that right. liner for you and, sa and save you over there so I don't have to cut my pricing? You yeah. know? No, that's awesome, man. Because obviously we don't want we don't want to cut pricing. We want to add value. more value rather than yeah, because it, it's pricing is you ju you just have to add more value than what the pricing is. So you could decrease your pricing and keep your value the same, or keep your pricing the same and increase your value. Dude, that's awesome. That's uh, that's I mean that's that's what we want to do in packaging is always focus on on the value that we're delivering. Yeah. So I appreciate it, man. I know you're super busy. I want to kind of like wrap this thing up here. If I want to buy, oh, I'm in Arizona, so I can go to Tempe. If you're not in Arizona and you want to yeah. get cookies, like how can you get cookies today? Or do you have to wait? You have to wait. <laughs> so we actually do nationwide shipping, but we just turned it off because of packaging. <laughs> We've been shipping them in uh in a six or a dozen, but basically like a like a donut box, right? So large surface area in the mm -hmm. top allows them to get smashed. So we need we need to make it a little bit more rectangular. It'll probably get sued. <laughs> why, why not? <laughs> that, that's what, what, why not, why not sell the, the pucks and oh, I no. bake it at home? We, we are looking at doing that as well. Doing, doing like a take and bake product. Um, either way right now though, uh, it's just, we have too much surface mm -hmm. area. So when you stack a ton of them on there, the middle obviously gives and it smushes those cookies a little bit. So we're redoing our packaging right now. We have stores open mm -hmm. in Utah. 
We just have the Tempe one in Arizona. I think Scottsdale is actually opening in two days. Oh, wow. Friday. Saratoga Springs in Utah is opening in two days as well. We have a, we have, we have, we have a lot of stores. Uh, I mean, a, several per month from here till yeah, who knows forever. Where. Until we hit a thousand, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> who, who are you working with on your uh, on your packaging? Your to solve your e commerce crushing issue. Do you know? Um, okay. I don't know. I don't know. I uh, I talk with our CEO about it on our weekly calls, and then she assigns it out to somebody. So I don't. I I know that's on the lower priority list, but I I I, I want it solved because we still are missing out on a decent amount of yeah. orders um, because we decided to turn off. I'm like, if we're not gonna deliver an amazing product. Let's just not deliver it at all until we can troubleshoot that. That's the show. Thanks so much for joining me. Make sure to subscribe to the show on YouTube, on Apple Podcasts, and anywhere else that you get the podcast. Can't wait to share the next one.